Hi friends, now in this session we will cover the theoretical part. So I have some notes to share with you that will be useful for you to download and uh, and uh, for your self study cable sizing calculations. So introduction: the proper sizing of an electrical load bearing cable is important to ensure that the cable can operate continuously under full load without being damaged. Withstand the vast short circuit current flowing through the cable. Provide the load with a suitable voltage drop uh, and avoid excessive voltage drops. Uh, optional ensure operation of product devices during an earth fall. So these are the considerations that are important while deciding the cable sizing. Then we will go to the general methodology. All the cable sizing methods more or less follow the same basic six step process gathering data about the cable, its installation condition, the load that is that will carry it, determine the minimum cable size based on continuous current carrying capacity, determine the minimum cable size based on voltage drop considerations, determine the minimum cable size based on short circuit temperature rise. Determine the minimum cable size based on earth fault loop impedance. Select the cable and this fifth is an optional. Select the cable based on lowest of the sizes calculated in step 2, 3, 4 and 5. Data gathering. The first step is to collect the relevant information that is required to perform the sizing calculations. Typically you will need the obtain the following data. So this data is first of all will be required when you are starting the cable sizing load details you need to collect how much is the load the characteristics of load that the cable will supply which includes load type motor or feeder three phase single phase or dc system or source voltages full load current or calculate this if the load is defined in terms of power is in kilowatts so now the rating of the equipment is provided in watts Nowadays, it's more common also that MPs are also mentioned, but if not mentioned, then you can calculate by Ohm's law. Then you can calculate full load power factor, locked uh, rotor or load load, st uh, load straight, uh, starting current, starting power factor, distance, length of cable run from source to load. This length should be as close as possible to actual root of the cable and include enough contingency for vertical drops, rises and termination of the cable tails. Cable construction. The basic characteristics of cable physical construction which include conductor material. Normally it could be copper uh, or aluminum, conductor shape, circular or in certain shape, conductor type, stranded or solid. The standard will provide you the more flexibility where solid is less flexible. Conductor surface coating, for example, no coating, tin, silver, or nickel, insulation tie, PVC, XLP, or EPR. Number of cores, single core or multi core, for example, two core, three core, four core, etc. Installation conditions. Uh, how the cable will be installed which includes uh, above the ground or under the ground installation arrangement for example under the ground cable it is directly buried or buried in conduit for above ground it's installed on the cable tray ladder against a wall in air etc ambient or soil temperature of installation site these are are the factors that i have discussed with you already while calling as k factors Cable bunching, the number of cables that are bunched together, uh, cable spacing, whether the cables are installed touching or spaced from each other, soil thermal resistivity for ground underground cables, depth of laying for underground cables. For single core three phase cables are cable installed in trefoil or laid flat. And then okay, the next is cable selection based on current reading. So following current uh, current flowing uh, through a cable generates heat uh, through the resistive losses in the conductors. Dielectric losses through the installation, insulation and resist, uh, resistive uh, losses from current flowing through any cable screen shield armoring. Cable components must be capable of withstanding the temperature rise and heating from the cable. 
this insulation should be able to bear the heat produced uh, while transferring the current it is designed at full load current the current can capacity of a cable is maximum current that can flow continuously through a cable it is sometimes also referred to as continuous current reading of or amplitude of cable cables with larger conductor cross sectional area that is more copper or aluminum have low resistive losses and are able to dissipate the heat better than smaller cables therefore 16 mm cable will have a higher current carrying capacity than 4 mm cable base current ratings international standards and manufacturers of cables will quote base currents a rating of different type of cables in tables such as one shown each these cables pertain to specific type of cable construction and based of installation it is important to note that the current rating are only valid for quoted types of cable and base installation conditions so the cable rating itself is uh, nothing it uh, you have to take care that where this cable will be installed and how it will be installed it will derate Uh, basically the rating of the cable so you have to multiply this k factor uh with it so here you can see a manufacturer has provided a cable and uh, this is a cable current rating of cable is uh, 3 by xlp insulated copper conductors so there are some installation methods so based on different installation methods uh the rating of the cable is different in each installation method for example this is uh, 1.5 mm so installation method a1 the rating is 17 and a2 is 16.5 and b is uh rating is 20 and c is uh, 22 ampere and so on so here you can see even uh, how the cable is laid is affecting so you can see method a we have seen here method a1 a2 so uh, reference method a if the cables are laid in this form this is a1 or in this form and there is a conduit and all cores are laid separately or all three cores are laid uh, in another another conduit for a1 is insulated single core conductor in conduit in a thermally insulated wall multi core cable in conduit in a thermally uh, thermally insulated wall so if you are using single core or multi core cable and the current carrying capacity will affect and these cables are running through a conduit so here you can see if you are using a single core the rating is more because uh, in this way uh, the heat dissipation is easy so it can carry more current like 17 amperes and if uh, three core cable is used the advantage is it's uh, more robust and easy to lay down but capacity of current and capacity of the cable is now reduced to by 0.5 ampere So now let's see the B1 and B2 and so on. So this is B1 method, insulated uh, single core conductor in conduit on a wall. So when you install the conduit in on the wall, single core and this is multi core. So this is basically so the method is uh, inside thermally inside thermally insulated wall. this conduit is running inside wall and this conduit is running in air outside this, so this one is concealed when the conduit is running in concealed and this conductor is running in air so you can see if the conductor is in air and each if uh, each core is running separately in the conduit the rating is now increased to 20 ampere because now the heat can easily be dissipated and whereas again uh, for the three core cable uh this uh, rating is reduced by 0.5 ampere so you will see now uh, installation method of c d and e f and g so if you come to see you can see in this one single core multi core cable on a wooden wall so they have installed cable not in conduit but they have installed the cable directly on the wooden wall by some kind of support and you can see the d 
so d is multi or single core cable installed in conduit buried in the ground so the cable is buried in the conduit in the ground this is d1 and d2 is uh, multi core or single core cable buried directly in the ground so here you can see this is uh, so what's your guess which capacity of conductor should be having a more which configuration will have a, allow more current so it's d or d2 so let's see d1 or d2 so d1 is allowing less current because the heat is uh, because it's in conduit and heat dissipation is not that much good but d3 is uh, you can see you can draw additional 2 ampere current from the cable uh, only by how it's lead so this is basically some examples then we come to method e so multi core cable in free air so this method is applies to cable installed on cable ladder perforated cable tray or cleats provided that the cable is spaced more than 0.3 into d or diameter of the cable from the wall uh, note that cable installed on unperforated cable trays are classified d under method c so you can see now if you the most famous method uh, is to run the cable uh, through basically the cable trays so let's see what's method is this method f method g and f and g both methods are through the cable tray and with some different configuration e f and g all cables are you can see in in the g the cable laid like this and f and e so we'll see how straighting the you can see only the cables which are coming above 35 mm they have provided this factor so this is e f and g these are all cable running through cable trays so you can see when the cable is uh, in the cable tray you will achieve the maximum uh, current rating so that's why mostly in the substation you will see they are following the method uh, running through cable trays in order to achieve the maximum current rating which is also uh, this method is also economical and also in this way you will achieve the maximum current rating and it will also result in saving in a lot of copper so this is basically example of uh, derating of the cables uh, you can uh, study here this is method E you have to keep the cable spacing 0.3 times the diameter of the cable in F uh, single core cable in touching in free air so you are keeping again with the wall diameter of 0.3 of all diameter of the cable three times and you are arranging the cable in two different forms both in both forms and G you can see you are keeping the cable at some space and with the wall it is 0.3 the highest basically in this one you will get the highest uh, current rating so then we have installed current rating when the proposed installation condition differs from the base condition d rating or correction factors can be applied to base current rating to obtain the actual installed current ratings for example if uh, uh, proposed installation conditions uh, you have uh, then the design calculations of uh, doing the cable uh, installation with particular method and particular moment of 2 ampere but now you have changed for example first you designed to lay the cable in a tray but now you are burying it under the uh, under the soil and uh, you are burying it under the soil then it means that uh, you are basically you have now by the derating factor the current capacity of the conductor has to come down so this is basically the example for uh, derating factor so another very interesting example could be here that uh, let's see now this, let's discuss another example for example we have seen now uh, we have uh, this is this uh, uh, ground level and we uh, have laid the cable here 
and it's uh, breed directly under the soil and for example if uh, there is a raining the soil will be more damp and when the dampness of soil in increases in 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 the uh, rainy season then for example the current capacity uh, of the cable was 10 ampere so it will increase now you can put more current in the cable when it's more damp and when the, uh, the season is extremely dry so the season when the season next ha kya Okay, now we will go for uh, next topic, which is voltage drop. So, a cable conductor can be seen as uh, an impedance, and as a result, whenever current flows through a cable, there will be a voltage drop across it. Uh, it is driven by Ohm's law, and that is V is equal to I R or I Z. The voltage drop will depend on two things: current flowing through the cable. The higher the current flow, the higher will be the voltage drop. impedance of the conductor the larger the impedance higher the voltage drop and second is impedance of the conductor the larger the impedance the higher the voltage drops then we have cable impedances the impedance of the cable is function of cable size that is cross section area and the length of the cable most cable manufacturer will quote a cable resistance and rectangles in ohms per kilometers calculating the voltage drop and for ac system the method of calculating voltage drop based on a load power factor is commonly used so we have to calculate the voltage drop we should know the power factor full load current are normally used but if the load has high start ups currents that is motors then the voltage drop based on starting current and power factor of if applicable should also be calculated for three phase systems uh three V3 is equal to 103 I R not cos of 5 plus x sine of 5 L by 1000. Where V is the three phase voltage drops and I is the nominal full load current or starting current as applicable. RC is the AC resistance of the cable. XC is the AC resistance of the cable. Cos of 5 is the load power factor and L is the length of the cable. So here you can see. the voltage drop will increase if the length of cable is increasing if for example the load current is increasing i load current so voltage drop will be more and r, r and c xc will be these are the two constant of the cable that will increase if the length of the cable is increased 
so this is another formula for uh, three phase systems then we have a formula for a DC system if you want to calculate the voltage drop we don't have uh, basically the issue of power factor or phase angle so here you can see uh, depending on the phase angle uh, basically this uh, 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 at the same uh, ampere if the phase angles are different the voltage drop will be different because there are two elements one is uh, resistance one is uh, reactance so both will have a different effect then we have maximum uh, permissible voltage drop the maximum voltage uh, drop across a cable are specified because load consumer for example appliances will have input voltage tolerance uh, this means that if the voltage at appliance is lower than its rated minimum voltage then the appliance not operate current correctly appliances in general most uh, electrical equipment will operate normally at voltage as low as 80 percent nominal voltage for example if the nominal voltage is 230 volt ac then most appliances will work uh, can run at greater than 184 volt ac cables are typically sized for more conservative maximum voltage drop in the range of 4 to 10 percent at full load so why there is a requirement of permissive voltage drop the reason is that uh, each equipment is designed to work on specific low voltages beyond this voltage uh, it will not be allowable to to work or equipment can get damaged so it's very important to take the consideration of uh, voltage drop while calculating the cable size calculating maximum cable length due to voltage drop it may be more convenient to calculate maximum length of cable for a particular conductor size given a maximum permissive voltage drop that is 5% of nominal at full load rather than the voltage drop itself for example by doing this it is possible to construct tables showing the maximum length of corresponding to different cable sizes in order to speed up the selection of similar cables so manufacturers are providing a data sheet uh, where you can select that uh, and giving uh, with the length how much percent voltage drop this cable may cause at the rated current. The maximum cable length will achieve this can be calculated by rearranging the voltage drop equation and substituting the maximum voltage drop that is 5% of 45 volt nominal voltage that is equal to 0.75 volts. So here is basically uh, L max is the maximum length of the cable. So here is a calculation. So you can use this calculation if you want to calculate the maximum length of the cable, uh, uh, which is uh, which can be used at provided uh, uh, voltage drop. So you have to use the provided voltage drop uh, or allowed voltage drop might be 5%, 10%, whatever or you have to write the voltages here, how much voltages and then you and the result will be you can calculate the length of the cable so this is a very nice formula that uh, you can use uh, in your practical uh, calculations also then we have the same formula for single phase, for DC this you can download and you can practice yourself then we have short circuit uh, temperature rise during a short circuit at a high amount of current can flow through a cable for a short time this surge is current flow causing a temperature rise within the cable high temperature can trigger unwanted reactions in cable insulation sheet material and other components which can prematurely degrade the condition of cable as cross section area of the cable increases it can dissipate higher current fault current of given temperature rise therefore cable should be sized to stand the short circuit that is expected to see minimum cable size due to short circuit temperature rise so his, here basically is uh, the another criteria that we need to meet we need to calculate minimum cable size due to short circuit temperature rise and the formula is a is equal to under root i square T by K where I is about a short circuit uh, uh, current T is the duration of uh, short circuit and K is the temperature rise constant so you can see we have uh, the temperature rise constant is calculated based on material properties of the conductor and the initial and final conductor temperatures different uh, international standards have different treatment of the temperature rise constant but 
by way of example IC calculate it as follows so as per IC 60364-5-54 uh, the constants are calculated and normally manufacturer is providing this contact uh, this uh, basically the constants then we have initial and final conductor temperature rise uh, the initial conductor temperature rise is typically chosen to be operating temperature of the cable the final conductor temperature rise is typically chosen to be the limiting temperature of the insulation so these are two different parameters then we have short circuit energy the short circuit energy i squared t is normally chosen as maximum short circuit that cable could potentially experience However, if circuit with current limiting devices such as HRC fuses, then the short circuit energy chosen should be maximum prospective led through energy of protected device, which can be found from manufacturer data. So here, short circuit capacity you have to choose uh, for a cable, but if you're using a protection uh, depending upon the source which is connected, but if you're using an M MCB or fuses, then the current will be cut by the MCB and then uh, you can choose a lesser uh, ampere of the short circuit earth fault uh, loop impedance sometimes it is desirable or necessary to consider the earth fault loop impedance of circuit in sizing of cable uh, why suppose a bolted earth fault occurs between an active conductor and earth during such a fault it is desirable that upstream protected devices act to entrap the fault within a maximum disconnection time so as to protect against any inadvertent contact with exposed life parts ideally the circuit will have earth fault protection in which case the protection will be fast acting and well within the maximum concentration time the maximum disconnection time is chosen so that a dangerous touch voltage does not persist for long enough to cause injury or death so I have a separate trainings uh, related to substation earthing and earthing calculations. If you are interested, you can enroll in, in the training where you can understand the term touch voltage and step voltage and how these are calculated and what are the different safe, safe values for this. Uh, these are defined by normally IEEE and IEC standards. So if you are interested, you can enroll in my training. For most circuits, uh, a maximum disconnection time of 5 seconds is sufficient. Though for portable equipment and socket uh, outlets, a faster disconnection time is desirable that is less than or equal to one second and will definitely require earth fault protection. However, for circuits that do not have earth fault protection, the upstream protection device that is fused or circuit breaker must trip within the maximum disconnection time. In order for protection device to trip, the fault current due to bolted uh, short circuit must exceed the value that will cause the protected device to act within the maximum disconnection time for example suppose the circuit is protected by a fuse the maximum distance time 5 seconds then the fault current must exceed the fuse melting current at 5 seconds which can be found by cross referencing fuse time curves so then you have to do basically the coordination between the conductor uh, basically rating and, and the fuses then we have another topic of earth fault loop the earth fault loop can consist of various earth return path because for example if there is a fault between uh, conductor and it is grounded so it, it will form earth fault loop and you have to do the calculations for the earth fault loop in this case you need to add the earth impedance if you want to calculate the earth fault and here you can see the earth fault loop impedance can be found by ZS minus ZC plus and E where ZS is the earth fault loop impedance, ZC is the impedance of active conductor, Z is the impedance of uh, the earth conductor. So assuming that the active and earth conductors have identical lengths, the earth fault loop impedance can be calculated. So this is the formula. Then we have maximum cable length. So the maximum uh, earth fault loop impedance can be founded by regarding the equation above. So, you, by considering the earth fault, as I explained earlier, you can calculate the maximum length of the cable similarly. And uh, you can have uh, the results. 
so like maximum uh, for loop impedance can be found by rearranging the equation above that as max is equal to v naught divided by i ampere where zs is the maximum earth for loop impedance z naught is the phase earth for voltage as power protected device and i is earth for current so this was uh, little introduction little theory uh, so something some items are required in our uh, lecture and some items are really deep then you can i'm keeping it you to go through this uh, uh, theory uh, yourself you can download and you can study yourself uh, uh, in this topic thank you very much